Hi there, welcome to this lesson where we are going to explore the app authoring menu. That's this menu here in the far left of the screen. You may notice that my screen is a little different from the previous lesson. That's because I closed the browser without saving it. So make sure you save your app when you're building stuff. But it doesn't matter because those controls were just to explain the control properties and we are not building our app yet. Just to avoid this problem, well, it's better go into the configuration and then under general and enable the auto save. So it will save my app every two minutes. And this doesn't happen anymore. So make sure to remember to save your app. Now let's take a look at this app authoring menu. Here we have several options and we are going to explore and understand what they are one by one. The first one is the tree view. Here is where you can see all the controls inside your app. For example, here, I can see the screen one, that's this screen right here. And inside it, I have four controls that are the controls that are inside the screen. I could just go and add a new screen and here we have several templates. For example, I can start already with a screen that has a header and a gallery. Once the screen is added, we can see that we have the header here with a space for an image, a title and my user image and a gallery that's used to display information in the app. We are going to explore this later. And then I can see that inside the screen too, I can see all the other controls that are inside this screen. If at any moment I just click in a control that's inside another screen that's not active right now, my Canva will go directly to that screen. So that's very useful. Also here in the tree view, we have the app control here, where we have some configurations about the app itself. And we are also going to explore that through the course. And we have the components tab, where we can create reusable components. We are also going to see that later. Now let's go to the second icon in the menu, and it's the insert icon. Here I can insert all the controls again, same as the insert here in the top. But this one will always be here, differently from the one in the top that appears and disappears depending on what's selected. So basically here I can see all the controls. Then we have the data icon. This icon changed recently. Actually the entire pane here changed a little recently. So you may see in the future lessons a different icon here. This is the new one. If we just look at how it looked before, I have a screenshot here inserted inside the app that's hidden, just to demonstrate the difference. This was the old pane, and now this is the new pane. We don't see the names anymore, and the data icon is different, and some of them are hidden here on this ellipsis icon. So that's the difference, but keep in mind that everything will be here, maybe in a different order. Let's go back here. So this is the data tab where we can add data to the app. Basically it means we can connect to different data sources such as Excel files, SharePoint lists, SQL databases, Dataverse databases, and so on. Also we can use a lot of connectors in here to connect to different services such as Outlook email, OneDrive, Word documents, Planner, Outlook tasks, and so on. There are over 1,000 connectors already, so 1,000 services that you can connect and interact directly inside the app. Basically, if I were to just add some data, I would go to Add Data, search the connector, let's say SharePoint, click on it and keep the configuration. We are going to see in the next modules. Now we have the Variables option, where we can see variables and collections created inside the app. Those two things I just mentioned, don't worry right now, are used to store data inside the app. We can find them in here. Then we have the search tab. The search tab is used to find things inside the app. For example, I can search image, and then I will see everything that has image on its name or in the formulas. And then I see formulas regarding image, such as image position. That's, that's for one of these images here in the screen. Image 2, then I see the image in here. Image 1, that's this one, my screenshot. If I had something in the formula, I would also find. So it's very good to locate things inside the app. 
let's say we have a specific name that we want to find. We just find in here and we can even replace things. For example, I could use to rename. So let's say everything that has image, I will replace with EMG and then replace all 15, which in this case caused an error because I even replaced things that I couldn't replace. Let's go back. But you got the point. Let's say you have a variable name, a collection name that you want to change because it was not clear enough. Then you could do using this. I like this feature. Okay, you got the point. Then clicking on the ellipses icon, we have themes. Since we enabled modern themes, now I can change the theme of the app and the controls are going to change with that theme. And I can even add my own theme, changing the primary color. So if you have a different color on your company, you can create your own theme. Then we have media. That's where we upload images to the app, images, icons, images from stock images, as we already saw in the previous lesson. And we can even add videos or audios and use them in the app. So all the media is going to be here. And we also have this icon that clears the media that's not used. So it's going to delete from your app. Let's say you add a lot of images, then you're not using them. You want to clear it. So you'll just click here. After media, we have the Power Automate tab. Power Automate is also a tool for Microsoft that allows you to automate stuff. And it's very useful for automating daily and repeatable tasks. And we have a module later in the course, so you can also learn that. And then we have advanced tools that we have the live monitor to monitor the app usage and understand possible problems that's happening and also a test area where you can use to automate testing for your apps. Those are more advanced tools, as the name says, and we are not seeing them right now because you're just getting started. So basically, in this authoring menu, you have access to all the main things inside your app, the controls, the data, the variables, search and replacing, changing themes, adding media and automating. In the next lesson, we are going to see how to save and share an app with someone else. Since we are building apps, maybe we build something that's useful for the colleagues or something to collect data in the company. So we want to share with other people. And I'm going to show how it works in the next lesson. See you there. Now I'm going to leave you with a recommended video so you can learn more cool stuff. See you in the next video.